Who's that person you want to talk to? Why is Good Friday good? Good Friday is good because the price we couldn't pay got paid and the stain we couldn't clean got clean. Good Friday is good because the world was without hope, but the lamb was without blemish. Good Friday is good because the worst thing that could ever happen was simultaneously the best thing that would ever happen. Good Friday is good because on that cross, on that day, the great shepherd of the sheep walked through the valley of the shadow of death for us. Good Friday is good because even though the cross isn't pretty, it's beautiful. Good Friday is good because if we have a king who would rather die for his enemies than kill them. Good Friday is good because I am not good, but he is. Good Friday is good, because Friday is not the end of the story. Welcome to our Good Friday service. Uh, tonight, we are going to sing praise. Uh, we're going to read scripture. We're going to take communion uh, as we remember the sacrifice that Christ made for us. It's our hope uh, that this allows us to reflect on what Jesus did for us and to prepare our hearts to celebrate his victory uh, this coming Easter. I'm going to pray. God, we love you. God, we thank you that we have the opportunity to gather here and to remember. God, to reflect on what you did and to be able to celebrate something that the world would call foolish. God, but to us, it's victory and it is, it is so exciting. Uh, God, because we know what's to come. God, I just pray for your presence tonight. God, I pray for your power in our hearts and in our lives. Uh, God, and I just pray that we can uh, just give you glory and give you honor tonight as we remember you. spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so Yeah. 
I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, oh, you paid it all for me. been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, breathless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. No, I couldn't earn it. And I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God There's no shadow you won't up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't lie up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow. Now, on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? And he answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. G Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? And he said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread. And after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, 
I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. And Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount I know nothing but the blood of Jesus what
nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We're going to pause and we're going to have a moment uh, for communion. Um, just, I would say as we prepare our hearts for communion, but this entire night um, is focused on preparing our hearts for communion, right? On preparing our hearts and our minds um, to, to see Jesus, to know Jesus, and to know what he did. And I think what I love about this night as we read through scripture that we read through that the disciples, they took communion with Jesus. The first one, we read that they sung hymns with Jesus, just like we're doing tonight. So we get a, a, an opportunity to experience what they were able to experience um, as, we, as we do this. So I'm going to pray for communion, and then they're going to turn on um, the lights in the back and, and communion's in back if you want to grab it, but I'll pray. God, we love you. God, we thank you, uh, God, that in such a very specific way, God. You've given us an opportunity, not just every week, not just every day, God, but, but once a year to, um, to really elevate what you did for us, to put our eyes on it in a way that we can't miss, God, to put um, the world's eyes on it in a way that even if they would choose to, to not know you, God, that they can't miss what you've done, uh, God, and they can't miss that we celebrate that you gave your life in exchange for ours, uh, God. And I just pray that as we prepare to take communion tonight, God, that, um, God, that our hearts can just be just pliable, God, and be right there wherever you want to work in them and whatever you want to do because of your great love and what you did for us, God, the least we can do is offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. God, we just love you so much, and we just pray in your son's name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, and child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. No. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And then Jesus said to him, put, put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then should the scripture be fulfilled that it must be so? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. And Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. 
Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, this man said, I'm able to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days. And the high priest stood up and said, have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. What further witnesses do we need? You've now heard this flat blasphemy. What's your judgment? And they answered, He deserves death. And then they spit in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. And when he went out to the entrance, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. And after a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you too are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate the governor. Then when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and to the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, it's not lawful to put them into the treasury since it's blood money. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, and they took the 30 pieces of silver the price, on, the price of him on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel. And they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, you have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas! And Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? And they all said, let him be crucified. And he said, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gathering nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, his blood be on us and on our children. And then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified.
I am a thief. I am a murderer. Walking up this lonely hill. What have I done? I don't remember. And no one knows just how I feel. And I know that my time is coming soon. It's been so long. Oh, such a long time since I've lived with peace and rest. Now I am here at my destination. I guess things work for the best. And I know that my time is coming soon. Who is this man, this man beside me, that they call the king of the Jews?
Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him, struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to be crucified. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gold. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then the two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from that cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we'll believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened. And many bodies of the saints who'd fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. And when the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. To the cross I look, to the cross I cling, of its suffering I drink, of its work I do sing, and on it my Savior, both bruised and crushed. Show that God is love, and God is just. At the cross you beckon me, you draw me gently to my knees, and I am lost for words, so lost in love I Sweetly broken, holy surrender. What a priceless gift. Undeserved life have I been given through Christ crucified. 
You've called me out of death. You called me into life. And I was under your wrath. Now through the cross I'm reconciled. At the cross you beckon me, you draw me gently to my knees, and I am lost for words of lost in love, I'm sweetly broken, wholly surrendered, and at the cross you beckon me, you draw me gently my knees and I am lost for words so lost in love I'm sweetly broken wholly the cross you beckon me you draw me gently to my knees and I am lost for words so lost in love I'm sweetly broken wholly surrendered at the cross you beckon me draw me gently my knees and I am lost for words so lost in love I sweetly broken holy surrender 
as you know, this is not the end, and Sunday is coming. Uh, and we are excited. Uh, this Sunday, as we celebrate Easter, we are going to be looking at the, the power of the resurrection. All right, we're going to look at resurrection power, so I just want to invite you all back on Sunday um, as we uh, come together and we celebrate Jesus. I'm going to pray. God, we love you. We thank you for the anticipation that you give us between Friday and Sunday. The anticipation between the cross and the resurrection. God, because we spend our entire lives in that anticipation. God, that waiting and knowing that we will be in your presence and celebrating and celebrating. We just praise you for that, God, and we praise you that on Sunday that we have an opportunity, God, we always have that opportunity to, to praise you, to celebrate you, to remember your power in our life. And God, we just thank you so much that you gave your life on the cross, that you paid for our sins, that you've forgiven us for everything that we've done and that you've given us grace so that we're able to gather and celebrate on Sunday. God, we just love you so much and just pray in your son's name. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys have a good night. <laughs>